Hey guys, this is uh, Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. Microscopy is performed for a reason, obviously to collect images, to collect great images. And why do we collect these images? To understand a specific scenario. For example, if you're trying to understand uh, cancer or Alzheimer's, you know, you prepare your samples and uh, look at those samples and extract information, right? When you are trying to design uh, a new alloy, you look at the grain structure and you look at how the grain size is distributed. So there is a reason why you are imaging your samples on a microscope. So uh, we understand, at least if you watch the previous uh, tutorials, you understand how uh, to process images, you know, to do some thresholding, to do segmentation, and we'll talk more about it. But when you generate this data, oftentimes it's easier to save your data, your output as uh, a CSV file so you can perform your analysis elsewhere. If you would like to do your analysis in Excel, for example, that's one reason why you would like to dump it. Or the other way around, if you want to use the great uh, libraries in Python to actually perform a big data analysis, wherever that big data is coming from. You need to be able to read in the data, maybe from a CSV file or from other sources. So this tutorial is intended to go through the process of reading CSV files and also writing them because we may need them in future. Okay. Uh, so uh, I am going to copy and paste little snippets of code and then go through line by line to see how uh, to see how you know the uh, CSV file can be read or written. And the reason I'm not writing it live is I have my own favorite way of doing uh, reading CSV and writing CSV file, but that's just one way. There are many other ways of doing that, and I did some homework to come up with four or five different ways of writing CSV files. And I just wanna show you how to do that by not wasting time typing it. So let's go ahead and jump into Spider, which is the IDE we have been using because it comes with a lot of libraries preloaded. And I've created a CSV file uh, with just uh, some title with a header uh, called apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes, and then some just uh, numbers associated with this. And let's try to read this file by using our first method. So let us, uh, let me copy and paste it. So I'm copying and pasting from Notepad. So if something happens, I'll have to adjust it, but it looks like this did a good job here. Uh, so uh, the library that actually contains a lot of the CSV reading and writing functions is called CSV, obviously. So I'm going to import CSV here and the next line here, it says with open fruits1.csv, okay? And if this is in a different directory, go ahead and uh, give the entire uh, path to this file. But this is in the same directory as my Python file right now, so I'm just doing fruits1.csv. So with open fruits1.csv as my file, this is just, I called it my file. I can just call it F, whatever name you wanna give it. But when you change it there, change it here also, okay? Then I defined a, a variable called uh, reader and assigned it to csv.readerf. What that means is next time when I wanna use reader, I just type reader and not this entire thing. So just uh, reader, that's, that's pretty much it. Now, if I run these two lines, it should run okay. There you go. Uh, so the CSV file is now uh, read by the Python uh, file. Now, the reason I, uh, I I've added these two lines is so we can see uh, and do some stuff with what we have read. So now that this thing is in memory, we can go through each row in reader, which is nothing but this file, and then print each row, okay? So if I go ahead and run this, it printed apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes as list one. The next list is 20, 25, 42, 35. And the next list is 40, 50, 84. So this is nothing but, if you look at the original file, each row is saved as a separate list right here, which is fine. Then we can do 
some operations with these lists. You know, we can merge these lists. We can create a list of lists using this list or, and, and do whatever we plan on doing with this data. So this is one way. Um, there is, uh, uh, now let's see how to write uh, CSV. This is, this is my favorite way, one of the two favorite. In fact, the favorite way I do is, uh, there is a library called Pandas. Um, uh, now it looks like I'm not prepared to talk about Pandas. I plan on talking about it later on. But since I mentioned it, let me just show you my other favorite way. So import pandas. This is another library. Okay. And pandas is designed to handle data. Pandas is designed for machine learning, uh, you know, or any types of statistical analysis, data analysis. Pandas uh, enables us to, uh, enables us to uh, uh, format the data or to read in the data in the format that's kind of standardized in a way. So I'm going to re-import pandas as pd. Let's say, uh, what is it saying? Uh, imported but unused. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and now I'm going to assign this to uh, a variable called data and I'm going to say pd dot, okay? This is read underscore CSV right there. You can read Excel, you can read a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to use read dot C, uh, underscore CSV. And this is exactly why I like pandas. Uh, and now what can we type inside here? So this is nothing but my file. Okay, so we call this fruits1.csv. That's it. We are done. So this is how we read data into pandas. This is as easy as it is. Now we can do whatever we want to do with this data. So just to see how it structures, Pandas has its own data structure, data format, you know, uh, and it's pretty amazing. It looks very similar to Excel if you, from the looks wise. So let's go ahead and print that. So data dot, okay. So what can we do? Uh, I want to type or I want to print uh, the, uh, when I say head, that means come from the top. If I say tail, go from the bottom of this data, okay? Let's print the top 10 or top five. If you don't put any variable inside, it's just the top five, okay? So let's run these lines and you'll see right away why I love pandas. There you go. That's how the result looks like. Very well formatted, apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes. And now with pandas, I can do a whole bunch of other data analysis tasks. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial right now, but uh, now that we understand how to read CSV two different ways, okay, let's go ahead and look at a few ways to write a uh, CSV file. So let's uh, uh, not use any uh, of the existing libraries, just core Python, nothing else. So here I'm not importing anything. This is all the part of basic Python. So first I defined a list called apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes. And then I'm just uh, uh, creating an output file called fruits.csv. If you remember, we uh, also did this open in when we were reading, yeah? So open fruits.csv and this W means in the writing mode, I can actually write to this file. There are a few others, uh, T means text, write text, but if you don't put T, by default it is T, text. That's why I don't put T right there. So search for uh, various things that you can put right next to, you know, various uh, modes right there. So that's it, so my output file is there. Now it's ready to be written to. So I'm gonna go through each element here. Remember uh, from, our, uh, uh, from our lecture about uh, lists, if you want to go through each element in the list, you can use the fur loop. So what I'm doing here is fur, some name here, I just called it fruit, in this list, right? In some list, what do you want to do for each element? I want to output and write. And what do we want to write? Whatever is uh, fruit, uh, you know, in this case, for iteration number one, the fruit is apple. So go ahead and write apple and create a new line, slash n is creating a new line. And after creating a new line, go ahead and uh, continue this loop. The next one is oranges, right? Create a new line, okay? So when I run this, it should create a file called fruits.csv, which it just did uh, here. And let me open a text file and drag my fruits.csv here so you can see uh, it looks very empty. 
this seems to be a bug with uh, what uh, the system. So maybe same, uh, I don't know if it's an Anaconda thing or what's going on. If I run this the second time, now it seems to have written because uh, earlier it showed zero kilobytes. Now it is showing one kilobyte. So I have no idea why it's doing that, but uh, let me go ahead and drag it and there you go. It's written apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes, and there, it's comma separated. We are not seeing comma here, it's comma separated. Uh, uh, well, it's actually dumping into the CSV file. Uh, so now, this is one way of writing it, and I do not do this quite often, as you can tell. I just, I just found this uh, 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 somewhere, and I just, uh, uh, you know, pasted it here. There is another way of writing pretty much the same thing, and I'll just copy and paste so you can see it. Uh, you know, so again, I defined the list with openfruits.csv as f, exactly the same thing. But instead of doing uh, going through the loop of for list, I just did f dot write, create a new line, and this dot join is going to join these apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes, and it's going to uh, give you exactly the same result. This is also not my favorite way of doing things. Uh, and the most common way I usually do is one of those is this. Okay, let me. Uh, so now I created a list that is list of lists. Okay, so the one, the first one is apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes, and the next one is 20, 25, 42, 35. Maybe I have 20 apples, 25 oranges, and so on. Okay, so if I have that now with openfruits.csv, okay in write mode, a new line, it's just, uh, again, uh, creates a new line. You can actually uh, not uh, include it, test out how the output looks like, include it, see how it looks like, okay? So with open this file in the write mode and as CSV file, remember, this is no different than what we have done before. Now I'm defining writer. Previously, if you remember, we defined reader when we were reading CSV files, yeah? Now I'm defining writer equals to csv.writer. Previously it was reader, okay? csv.writer, write a CSV file with a delimiter equals to comma. The way, the reason I like this format is now I can actually define whether I want a comma separate, separated or a dot separated, whatever. I can define the delimiter here. Now I'm just going through the list. For fruit in some list, yeah? For fruit in some list, writer dot write row. It rows. So this would be row number one, that would be row number two, and if you have more data, it writes more rows. So let's go ahead and change this to fruits two, okay? And run it, and I should have a new file called fruits two, and I see it here. Uh, let me drag that again into here, and now you can see the first row is apples, oranges, grapes, and mangoes. The second row is 20, 25, 42, 35. If you open the CSV file in Excel, you would see it nicely formatted. The reason I'm not opening is, for whatever reason, opening Excel file on my system is taking forever. Maybe it's the plugins I have uh, to the Excel. So this is one way, uh, one of my favorite ways. And uh, there is another way, again, I leave this other one as is and copy and paste. And this is another way, okay? Not much different, again, I'm using the same list here and instead of with open, uh, I defined this output file as uh, open fruit.csv in the mode write mode. And then with output file, okay, this is no nothing but exactly the same thing written in a slightly different way. Okay, my writer is still csv.writer, except uh, I just put my output file in here. Okay, so uh, that's it. So this is a different way. It uh, The output should look exactly how it looked uh, uh, for the one up here. Now, what if you have a different type of data? For example, instead of this, if you have, uh, let's say, uh, 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 your, I'm thinking about, okay, you have a bunch of grains that you detected of cells, okay? And then you have like cell ID, cell number one, two, three, four, and then their attributes like diameter and area and so uh, all. You represent that in a dictionary typically in Python. So, or you can represent that as, uh, let me just copy and paste. Uh, I should have used the cell example I just gave you, but when I created this, I just used, my header is name, age, and zip, okay? And for each of this, I have associated name, age, and zip, 
as a separate uh, list of lists here, okay, again. And uh, previously we saw that each list is written as a row, separate row, okay? That's exactly what we are going to do down here. With open people.csv as f, my CSV writer, again, I'm initiating this like csv.writer f. This is exactly the same line that we have seen at least a couple of times before. And now what do we want to do? CSV writer dot write row. First, we are writing the header, okay, which is right there. So my first row is going to be the header. And then I'm iterating through each row within this row of rows, okay? Then it goes through row one, row two, row three, and then writes row, okay? One row at a time. So if I run this, okay, I already see, uh, I already see uh, people.csv over there. So I'm trying to find my notepad, yeah. And let me drag this people.csv over here, okay? So now you can see name, age, zip, John 30 and so on. Now, if you have, uh, if you already have data in dictionary, because typically you do not have your data uh, uh, in this format, in, in uh, you know, a list and then lists of lists, typically this type of information is usually saved as a dictionary, meaning name is John, name is Mary, name is Henry, age is 30, okay? If you have information, if you have your data written that uh, in, in such way, there is a function within CSV called dict writer, okay, dictionary writer. And it's pretty straightforward what it does, right? I mean, we are, again, this line is same as before. And, uh, uh, and my field names is called a header, and then it's writing uh, the header, and then it's writing the rows now. It's not a row anymore. If you remember the previous one, I should have kept the previous one. Uh, let me copy and paste the previous one where we were iterating through each row. Okay, there you go. Where we were iterating through each row and then writing row. And here we are writing rows because it's going through all of this anyhow. So let me go ahead and run this and let's call this people2.csv so we know it's a different file that it's saved. Okay, so there you go. I see people2.csv. And let's go ahead and open that. It looks exactly the same. Okay. So here, there are many ways. Uh, again, I showed you a few ways of uh, reading the files, reading CSV and dumping CSV. So in the next tutorial, let's actually do uh, some image processing and save our result as a CSV. And that's exactly the reason I went through this tutorial. So it, it gives you the information that's needed to, to understand the next tutorial. So. If you like this, please go ahead and like this video. If you like all, uh, a few of these videos, if you would like to keep up with uh, the content that I'm creating here, please subscribe to this channel, which encourages me to create more, uh, more videos. And uh, let's uh, talk in our next uh, tutorial. Until then, enjoy life and thank you very much.